Now, even though it's getting on a bit, one of my absolute favorite Android launches you can download right now is the bloody brilliant Niagara. A quick glance at Niagara and you'd swear you weren't even looking at an Android phone at all. It basically cops a squat all over the regular Google desktops, instead presenting a short list of up to eight of your favorite apps. As for the others, well, they're tucked away in a clever cascading A to Z index, out of sight and out of mind. It's a neat, tidy and efficient setup. And best of all, it means that time guzzlers like social media apps are hidden from view. So you're not tempted to give them a good old poke. Otherwise, you know what it's like. You pick up your phone just to check if you've got any new messages. And then eight hours later, you're staring at an Instagram reel of sausages that look like people. You realize you've forgotten to pick up the kids from school. And Niagara makes your life easier in lots of other ways as well. So say you're playing a good bit of music or an audiobook, podcast, whatever. Well, you'll spy that some handy media controls will instantly materialize right there on the desktop for fast access. Pretty simple stuff, but it allows you to quickly and easily pause and play your music right there on the desktop. Otherwise, skip to the next track or whatever. And of course, you can tap your way right back into that media app. And also, you can see here, we've got a new message waiting for us in Gmail. You can check this just by swiping right. Then we can archive it, reply, all kinds of stuff. And likewise, if you swipe right on any of your favorite apps, you can jump straight into some of the most popular features. And if you're a wee bit worried you're gonna lose track of time while you're scrolling through YouTube or social media or whatever, you can actually set a time limit. And then Niagara will either give you a gentle nod or it'll straight up kill that app when the time is up. And back on the main desktops, you can swipe down to access all of your notifications at once. Otherwise, you can also swipe up to pop up a search bar to find any app that you might require. But I've got to say, I really love this cascade and index, especially the haptic feedback it provides. It's a very satisfying full on rumble. And back in the day, the customization options for Niagara were pretty basic to say the least, but they've really improved and expanded over time. So now you've got actual wallpapers on top of basic themes including, oh yes, some geeky anime efforts just when I thought I couldn't love Niagara anymore. But you know, you've got quite a lot of other options that you can choose from. You can also choose your own papers and you can play around with those theme colors. And if you go pro for a one-off fee, you can unlock even more features, including a weather and calendar app, which just sits up there at the top. You've got stackable widgets as an option as well. But one of my favorites is the icon replacement. You see, the problem with regular app icons is they're really bright and bold and colorful and your brain instantly recognizes these little pictures and tempts you to just give them a wee poke or a prod and waste and valuable time. But Niagara can counter this effect by changing up that app icon design. So for instance, tap marble and suddenly all of those icons are the same shade. And this will help you to only tap the app that you actually picked up your phone to use and avoiding all the rest. Ah, massive willies to you. So if you're after a minimalist UI that helps to curb distractions, well, Niagara Launcher should absolutely sizzle your sausage. But there are quite a few great alternative launchers out there as well. If you happen to grow bored of Niagara, for instance, and also as a convenient way of extending this video. And one of the best I've tested in recent times is the minimalist launcher from QQ Labs. And this once again serves up a hand-picked list of your essential apps and hides away all of the other stuff they might otherwise unintentionally piddle about with. And as you can see, those apps are simply presented as a list of names, no bright, bold, colorful logos that your stupid, annoying brain might be tempted to poke. As with Niagara, you can choose which apps appear here on your main desktop. You can also swipe left to access all of your apps with a handy search feature. So you don't have to scroll for bloody ages if you've got quite a lot. And if there are any apps you still find yourself tempted to tap on, well, you can just give them a long poke and then say hide. And then the only way you'll find them again is by diving on into the minimalist launcher settings, going to home screen and then hidden apps. And if you really can't be trusted to stop playing Genshin when your lunch break is over, well, no worries. Just like Niagara, you can set yourself a time limit. So if you're given to temptation, your phone can still help you quit before you spaff away an entire evening. And if you think you've got a bit of a problem and you want to break from an app without actually deleting it, you can just block it instead. This prevents you from opening said app for anything between four hours and 30 days, depending on how harsh you want to be to yourself. Good bit of tough love right there. And of course, it's quite a simple UI here, but you still got a fair amount of customization. So for instance, you can change up the two default shortcuts down here. You got a small variety of color themes to choose between. 
And there's also a notification filter as well, so you're not distracted by any apps that aren't worthy. I just really like a few of the wee details here as well, like how your phone's battery life is depicted by an ever shrinking ring surrounding that time widget. However, if you want to unlock the full minimalist launcher experience, well, it will cost you an eye water in 60 pund, otherwise 30 pund a year if you want to do like an annual subscription. It's quite the price hike over how it was originally. And certainly if you want to take full advantage of the minimalist launcher and its various features, you will have to spunk up that cash. But hey, if you'd rather spend that cash on cigs and whiskeys, well, near worries. You've got plenty of other more affordable slash completely free options, including the rather spiffy AP15. Now this launcher has a similar vibe to minimalist, presenting all of your regular apps right there on the desktop. That's just plain text, no icons or fancy shenanigans. This really is about as minimalist as a desktop gets. You can swipe down for your notifications bar still, but apart from that, it's basically just a list of your apps. If you want to change up the likes of the fonts, just press and hold on that display and then tap text preferences. And as well as choosing from any fonts that you can find on your phone, you can also change up the theme color as well as the maximum and minimum text sizes and also you can boost the margins a bit, spread things out. And as you can see here, any apps that you want to stand out a bit from the rest of the crowd, well, just give them a tap and then choose the app preferences up top. You can change that tone so they really do a leap off the screen, even give them a bit of a shadow. As for the size of each app, well, this is automatically scaled. So the more you poke it, the bigger it gets. Just ask your mum, she'll explain. So you can see just a few pokes later, Deezer is considerably bigger than it used to be. And you may well be thinking, oh my God, this desktop is an absolute nightmare. Look at all that clutter and crap. Well, no worries. All you need to do is again, long press. And as you can see, you can hide apps away if you want to, to get rid of any stuff that you really don't want cluttering up your desktops. So just a minute or two later, it's looking considerably more manageable. If you want to pay a wee bit to unlock the Pro version of AP15, you get a couple of extra features as well, including a background pattern adjuster. You can mess around with the advanced rules and everything, but honestly, the bog standard basic free version of AP15 is absolutely fully functional and well worth a check. And if you decide you really like it, you can chuck a few quid at the devs for the Pro model just to say, cheers, lads, awesome stuff. And while you're at it, I'd also recommend checking out Yasan Launcher, which is still an early access and all of those premium features will cost you sweet FA. It's all free, baby. Now this time around, instead of a list of your apps, you're presented with a simple box grid of nine of your favorites. And when you first install Yasan, you'll simply choose your favorite nine apps, which you want slapped on there. But the more that you use this launcher, the more that it learns your daily habits. So these apps will actually shift around and be replaced with other apps at certain times of the day. So say, for instance, you only listen to music on your daily commutes. Well, good old Spotify or Deezer or whatever you use will pop up there in the mornings and the evenings. Or if you happen to spend 10 hours a day on the OnlyFans app, will that be sat there proud and prominent all day long? And of course, your other apps are a mere swipe away in this direction, whereas if you go the other way, you can change your alert and you can also dive straight into the battery settings. And yes, you always get a jolly wee mantra up at the top there just to really give you a bit of pep. Hey, it's a new day, guy. Maybe don't drag the noose out of the attic just yet. You can also search for apps, contacts, whatever with a quick tap of this magnifying glass here. Otherwise, you can also just simply swipe up. Mate, you are such a noisy licker. Can you go away, please? Thanks, buddy. And you got yourself a pretty decent selection of features stuck away in the settings as well. So for instance, you can hide any apps that you like from either the home screen, the apps tray or the search bar. And you can customize the apps drawer to a small degree, turn it into a list rather than a grid, for instance. And also that dashboard, you can even annihilate those greetings if you find they just depress you even more. But yeah, perhaps unsurprisingly, the customization for the main desktop, pretty limited as you might expect, because it's quite a basic setup. And another cracking option for anyone who really wants to streamline their Android desktop experience is Kiss Launcher, which sadly has bugger all to do with those bat mental glam rock pensioners. Sad. There's no widgets, no pages, just a search bar, a customizable row of essentials and a column of either recently or frequently accessed apps. As you start typing in that search bar, it'll pop up any contacts or apps that you might be after and just tap what you want. 
And I've got it set to add the most recently accessed apps to this wee list here. So as you can see, WhatsApp has now popped up there at the bottom. But you can change this to most frequently accessed apps instead. So all of your essential bits should be right there on the desktop. Otherwise, that search feature is super swift. Once you get used to this setup, it's brilliantly intuitive and just ensures you don't get distracted by crap you don't need filling your time. You've also got some customization options chucked into the KISS launcher. So for instance, you can update the wallpaper. And if you dive on into the settings, there's a fair bit of customization you can do. So for instance, changing up the icons, the colors, all the stuff you would expect. You can also mess around with a good bit of gesture support action. So action on swipe up brings up the keyboard. Action on swipe down can display the notifications. You can change all these bits as well if you want. So you can display a list of apps and everything is just so fluid, not particularly surprising as it's a lean 250 kilobytes. But best of all, a KISS launcher will cost you absolutely nouts. There's really no reason for not giving it a go. And there you have it, my lovelies. That is my selection of the very best minimalist launchers you can grab right now for Android. And of course, Niagara is still my all time favorite Android launcher. Absolutely love it. But did I miss off your own favorite minimalist launcher? Well, definitely let us know what that is in the comments below. If you get enough good ones, I'm hoping to round up the best minimalist launchers as recommended by the Spurton Army. And as always, please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, the usual YouTube bollocks, and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.